Good afternoon everyone, I am Shanti Zavi Barbas and I will be tackling about Colbert's stages of moral development. First, let us discuss what is moral development. Moral development is a process through which children develop proper attitudes and behaviors toward other people in society based on social and cultural norms, rules, and laws. Now, let us know who is behind the stages of moral development. Lawrence Colbert is an American psychologist and was among the pioneers of moral development research. He theorized that humans develop their moral judgments in six stages. As we can see, the theory is divided into three levels, which are the pre-conventional level, conventional level, and post-conventional level. In the pre-conventional level, the moral reasoning is based on the consequence or result of the act, not on the whether the act itself is good or bad. It is characterized by the child's evaluation of actions in terms of direct consequences. The stage one is all about punishment or obedience. One is motivated by fear of punishment, therefore he or she will act in order to avoid punishment. For instance, at stage 1, we make moral judgments based on obedience and punishment. Finn's sense of good and bad is directly linked to whether he gets punished or not. Finn sees what is happening to his friend and wants to help. He doesn't, however, because he is afraid the teacher may punish him if he gets caught fighting. He asks himself, how can I avoid punishment? Stage 2 is about mutual benefit. One is motivated to act by the benefit that one may obtain later. If you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours too. This is a stage wherein the moral behavior obtains reward or serves one's needs. For instance, at stage 2, we are motivated by our self-interest, right? So Mary decides to intervene and help Tom. She knows that she might get punished, but she also knows that she could become a victim herself someday. If she helps Tom now, he might help her in the future. She is asking herself, what's in it for me? Now we're about to go to the next level, the conventional level. In this level, the moral reasoning is based on the conventions or norms of society. This may include approval of others, the law, and order. This level explains the development of moral judgment and ethical reasoning in individuals. At this substage, the individual becomes knowledgeable in societal rules and norms and follows them in order to maintain social standing and order. Now we're down to our third stage, which is the social approval. One is motivated by what others expect in behavior. Good boy or a nice girl. The person acts because he or she values how he or she will appear, not others. He or she gives importance on what other people will think or say. For instance, at stage 3, the interpersonal accord and conformity guide our moral judgments. Betty sees the fight and wants to intervene. But when she realizes that all the others are just watching, she decides not to get involved. She wants others to see that she is a good girl who is conforming with the ethics of the community. She asks herself, what do others think of me? Next stage is the law. Next stage is the stage 4 which is the law and order. One is motivated to act in order to uphold law and order. The person will follow the law because it is the law. For instance, at stage 4, we value authority and want to maintain social order. When the teacher sees the group fighting, he immediately steps in and shouts, Stop fighting at school! It is forbidden! He feels that, above all, it is important to follow the rules, otherwise, chaos breaks out and that is his duty to uphold the rules to sustain a functioning society. The teacher at that moment asks himself, how can I maintain law and order? 
Now, let's go to the post-conventional level. In this level, the moral reasoning is based on enduring or consistent principles. It is not just recognizing the law, but the principles behind the law. Now, let's go to the stage 5, which is the social contract. Laws that are wrong can be changed. One will act based on social justice and the common good. In this stage, the individual acts with an understanding that laws are created by people coming together for the common good, and that these same people can change these laws if new demands or conditions arise. For instance, at stage 5, we understand rules as a social contract as opposed to a strict order. Jessie, who watches from afar, is not sure how she feels about this. To her, rules make sense only if they serve the right purpose. Obviously, the school rules prohibit fighting, but maybe Tom deserves to finally learn his lesson. Just yesterday, he punched a young girl from grade 1. She asked herself, does a rule truly serve all members of the community? Now, let's go to the final stage, which is the stage 6, the Universal Ethical Principles. This is associated with the development of conscience. Having a set of standards that drives one to possess moral responsibility to make societal changes regardless of consequence to oneself. At this stage, universal and abstract values such as dignity, respect, justice, and equality are the guiding force behind the development of a personally meaningful set of ethical principles. Examples of persons are Mother Teresa and Martin Luther King Jr. For instance, at stage 6, we are guided by universal ethical principles. All those involved now have to face the headmaster. He first explains the school rules and why they exist. He then clarifies that rules are valid only if they are grounded in justice. The commitment to justice carries with it an obligation to disobey unjust rules. The headmaster's highest moral principle is compassion. He believes that all people should learn to understand each other's viewpoints and that they don't feel alone with their feelings. He asks, what are the abstract ethical principles that serve my understanding of justice? To wrap up this topic, based on the situational examples that we have discussed, let us summarize what has been shown on the three levels of this theory. At the pre-conventional level, Finn is driven by fear and Mary by self-interest. Both judge what is right or wrong by the direct consequences they expect for themselves and not by social norms. This form of reasoning is common among children. At the conventional level, Betty responds to peer pressure and the teacher follows the rules. Their morality is centered around what society regards as right. At this level, the fairness of rules is seldom questioned. It is common to think like this during adolescence and adulthood. At the post-conventional level, Jesse knows that things are complicated because individuals may disobey rules inconsistent with their own morality. The headmaster follows a universal ethical idea at complete disconnect with what society thinks or the rules say. To him, everything is solved through compassion. The right behavior in his opinion is therefore never a means to an end, but always an end in itself. Not every person reaches this level. Now, let's proceed to the next topic.